Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the story of how I met my husband and how we came to fall in love and get married. This video is in collaboration with two of my YouTube friends, Christiana from Heart and Home. She is a stay-at-home wife. She does all kinds of videos on organizing and cleaning motivation. She has some inspirational videos just to help you become a better person or be more encouraged in life. I think you're really gonna enjoy the positive vibe that she has. She's just really delightful and lovely and I think you'll really enjoy her content if you especially enjoy the content on this channel. The other friend is Abby over at Inspire to Health. She is a stay-at-home mom. She's got two little ones and one on the way. And she is passionate about helping people to live their healthiest lifestyles, but whether that includes physically, that includes emotionally or spiritually. So she's got a lot of just encouraging content, some practical helps and tips to just living a holistically healthy lifestyle so you can check them both out they're wonderful I think you'll really be delighted with the content that they have on their channel okay so let's get started this video has not been rehearsed um, I have thought about how I want to share the story but you'll just have to kind of bear with me as I recall all of the events and details of how I met Ben and how we came to fall in love. Now for the longest time, I did not want anyone to ask me how I met my husband. I avoided that question if I could, even in our dating phase, because I was a little bit embarrassed about how we met. And uh, you'll find out why, because <laughs> I'll, I'll share that with you. But I wanna give you a little bit of a precursor or ex explanation of what led up to the point where I um, met Ben. When I was around 17, 18, I had an internship opportunity with a ministry here in the United States. And at that time, my parents actually decided to give away all of their belongings and go overseas to help open a Christian school on the little island of Guam. So it's a tiny island in basically in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It is between Hawaii and the Philippines and Japan. And uh, it's a, there's military there, it's a military base. So if you're in the military you know, community, you probably have heard of Guam. If you're not in the military world, this may be the first time of you hearing about this little island that's a US territory. So yes, my parents went overseas to serve as missionaries, start a school, and they eventually uh, started a church. But we'll get more into that in just a minute. So I was here for that for a year doing an internship. So after my internship was over, I had the opportunity actually, I was offered a job to stay on with this ministry, uh, a paid position and you know everything would just be included, living and salary and all of that. Or I could go over to Guam and join my parents in the ministry over there and work as a teacher and just help with the school. And so I prayed about it and I really felt like I should go to Guam. And so I decided to, to take that opportunity and go join my folks over there. So in some of my other videos, you may have heard me mention something about doing ministry overseas or living in the islands and things like that. Well, that is how it began. So I moved off to Guam and joined my parents and my youngest brother there and I taught first grade and kindergarten and when I moved out there um, I was actually in a new relationship at the time so uh, the ministry that I had interned with I had met a, a young man that I really really admired and honestly I had put together like one of those lists of things that I was looking for in a spouse it sounds so dorky now to talk about but I had a list of things I was looking for and he basically fit that list so we started to talk just as I had moved out there and so our relationship was having to kind of grow over a long distance he did end up coming out to visit me on Guam and did some service out there I knew at that time that well I really uh, admired him and thought he was such a fantastic young man and a lot of what I was looking for we just were not really connecting in a romantic way it didn't ever transition from admiration to feeling in love and having romantic feelings toward him and that kind of uh, confused me a little bit because I guess I was thinking like he's everything that I'm saying that I want but for some reason we're just not connecting in a romantic way. It, it ended, we decided to uh, 
to end it. And that was a really, really hard time for me. Uh, and granted, I was young. I was probably, I was 19 at the time. So it was a pretty serious relationship in fa as far as talking about marriage and a future together. So I just at that point after that, I was just kind of just confused and I didn't want to even think about guys after that. I didn't want to talk about marriage. I was just like, I'm just going to come here and I'm just going to serve. I'm going to teach these children and I'm not even going to think about guys right now. I don't I'm not interested in the least. <laughs> so I just took a break. I didn't date for years and I just taught and I loved that season of teaching. I loved the children. I loved focusing on God. I loved learning and growing in my faith and just being challenged in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was just a really, really special time. So fast forward four years. Things started to change for me a little bit. I started to become a lot more open to the idea of dating, but um, in my current circle, there wasn't really a network for that. So I decided to that I need to get out of my little bubble because I was pretty much working in the schools, serving in the ministry in our little home church. And so I decided to kind of branch out a little bit and I started to reach out to other churches and I started to try to be something of a hub and a connector for people uh, to kind of get out of their bubbles and circles as well. I I know there were some other ministries on the island and it's so easy to get kind of sucked into your um, community and your ministry and not to leave those those bubbles and so I wanted to be someone that brought people out of their individual bubbles and bring them together because I knew these people over here and I thought they were great I knew these people over here and I thought they were great and I just thought how great would it be for all of these people to kind of get together and to mingle because I think they would really just hit it off and and be able to share fellowship and build friendships and who knows, maybe date or something. And so I started hosting things like hikes and bonfire fellowships and jam sessions and just anything I could think of to get different people, different circles together. I started to do that. And during that time, some people did meet, some people did date and get married out of that endeavor to bring people together, which was great. And during that time, there was probably one guy that I could have seen myself with. Yeah, pretty much just one. We actually had a moment of sort of dating. It was a little bit complicated and then uh, it didn't work out. And so, that was heartbreaking for me and because I kind of envisioned us having a life together. He was someone who uh, wanted to pursue ministry. He wanted to start a school, which is kind of what my family did. I wanted to pastor and just like, I was like, okay, all right, we're on the same page here because I guess I just wanted someone, a man who was passionate about the things of God and not just about like living a nice little life. I wanted someone who was pursuing that kingdom and building it and wanting to do ministry and things like that. And I knew that that was hard to find because not everybody is up for something like that. And it's amazing how that when you are kind of an acquaintance with somebody or you know them a little bit, but you don't really have a lot of time to connect with them and really, I guess, to date and to get to know them um, better, that your mind kind of fills in the blanks with what you, what you think and hope that they are. And I think that's a little bit of a dangerous place to be when you're romanticizing someone that you don't know that well or putting them on a pedestal or thinking they're, you know, they're something or the one for you because I didn't realize that I had been kind of holding out for this person that I had met and was romanticizing about. And I've kind of acted in a way like I was already taken. So when that relationship opportunity fell through, there was basically no one else I could think of. Not that there weren't guys around, but I was looking for something really specific in, in a guy. And so, um, and there were actually some guys that I thought were really attractive and I enjoyed like being around them and stuff. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't like you. Like stop being so charming because I was really looking for some, someone who um, I could do like ministry with and stuff like that. So it was at that time that um, my mom actually, she said, well, why don't you try online dating? And I thought, no 
way I am not doing that because that's what like desperate people do and there's no way I'm gonna put my picture and profile on the internet like some product on Amazon to be shopped over by who knows who and so I was just totally against that idea I thought it was the lamest and I would hate to like have to share like that's how I met my husband because I mean I think we just kind of think about our story of how we met our husband and it has to be this great story and honestly like I I literally had a dream that I met my husband in the jungles of the Philippines and we were rescuing orphans and I'm pretty sure he was Tim Tebow so I mean like that was the kind of story I was hoping to have when I share with people of how I met my husband like we met on the mission field and doing great stuff and that would have been such an epic story so the the idea of going to the internet, I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And what if somebody I know sees me on there? That would be so embarrassing. So she's like, well, I'm just, I'm just going to do, put your profile up there and, and we'll just see what happens. I just kind of shook it off. I'm like, oh my goodness, mom, you're so crazy. So, but she did. She made a profile for me on Christian Mingle just so she could kind of look around and just kind of shop for fun. You know, I think if any of you have ever done that, right? You just kind of like, well, I'll just make a profile just for fun and kind of look and see who's out there, right? I just remember very clearly like one day she was sitting there looking on there and saying, oh, look at this guy. He's a he's a youth pastor and he's cute. And I was like, oh, really? You know, so I just kind of, she kind of coaxed me and drew me over there to, to where she was. And we just kind of looked at profiles, laughed at some of them, which that sounds really mean. But, and then also there were some, quite a few catches on there. It was, uh, just kind of an interesting humbling thing to be on there and for the longest time I didn't tell anyone I didn't even tell my closest friends so secretly I was on this site my mom I don't my mom oh my goodness so she would kind of just go on she kind of knew what I liked and what I was looking for so she'd kind of go and find some profiles She's like okay these are the guys that I found today Abby and I just like shake my head at it and then but secretly I was kind of curious so I actually started to kind of entertain the idea a little bit when I saw that there were some really nice guys on there. So she found this one profile and it was Ben's profile. She knew that I liked dark hair, dark eyes, dark skin, and that I kind of had a thing for Indian guys. <laughs> well, not guys, plural, but you know, just that type. I just thought they were really beautiful. And so she's like, I found him and he's a worship leader in his church. And she showed me his profile and I did think he was really handsome. And what he had to say in his profile just seemed very thoughtful. And so of course I didn't send him a message at that point because I just thought that would be a little forward. So he got a notification that I had viewed his profile, which it was actually my mom at first had viewed his profile. So he got notified this person has viewed your profile and he saw that it was me and he actually forgot that he was even signed up on Christian Mingle he had signed up at one point just to kind of see who, who was out there and the funny thing too is that he had decided previously that he didn't want to do a long-distance relationship he had been in a long-distance relationship before and it didn't work out so after he saw my profile he decided to send me a message and from then we started to send messages back and forth and I wanted to Skype and video chat as soon as possible just to get a feel for the person. Since I was all the way on Guam and he was here actually at North Carolina, I didn't want to create a connection with someone through email only to find out that we didn't have a connection like sort of in person and so we did a video chat very soon after that uh, first correspondence. I still remember very clearly our first Skype date and he had to get up super early in order to account for the time difference because we were over 10 hours ahead so he got up early to talk to me and um, I just remember like seeing his face for the first time and he was just beaming and he had this huge smile on and he said hey Abby <laughs> and I just um, loved that he was not shy at all just to show his excitement to talk to me and he was even more ha like handsome to me on video and I got to see how he talked and how his um, his countenance was and just um, how enthusiastic he was and not only that but how thoughtful he is and so we talked about a lot of stuff we talked about things that were important to us ministry and, and different stuff like that and he was not a lazy conversationalist he was really thoughtful in his 
in his questions and his responses to my questions and so um, but I honestly even though I thought he was like handsome and thoughtful and seemed like a really upstanding guy I thought he was a little bit serious a little too serious and at that time there were some some interesting things happening with our ministry there on Guam where we didn't know if we were going to have a facility to continue to operate and I had been working in this ministry for four years and to see that it possibly might fall apart was a really tough thing to swallow, a tough pill to swallow. So I, my life was kind of, kind of currently in a, um, at that point was a kind of, I don't know, stressful and I was questioning a lot of stuff. So when we talked and he had all these serious thoughts and stuff like that, it just, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I need something to kind of break up the seriousness of the situation right now. But I continued to talk with him and we had some really good conversations, but I was secretly hoping to see more of his fun side. While Skype really added to our emails and doing video chat, I knew that we needed some time in person. I mean, well, duh. Yeah, eventually we we're going to have to meet in person somehow, even though we were so far apart. And it just so happened that I was going to be coming to the States for some training in a few months. When I went to the States, I was in Georgia and he drove down uh, one of those weekends to visit with me and for us to meet in person. So I still remember that trip very clearly. And it was kind of funny too, because I was actually talking to another guy on Christian Mingle as well, just because at that point, um, anyone that I was talking to, and, and I talked to quite a few guys on there, it was kind of acquaintance and friendship. I wasn't really romantic with anybody, but it was kind of like there was potential, but how much, you know, could we connect really being so far apart? So it had come down through um, different correspondences to two guys that I was going to meet. One was Ben, and then the other one was a guy um, in Georgia and so I had met the first guy and he was a, a really nice handsome guy but I got the feeling that he didn't have any trouble like getting dates or girls to like him and I got the feeling too that maybe he wasn't quite that into me so I decided not to meet him again then I was to meet Ben and so Ben had driven down one weekend all the way from North Carolina and he stayed in a hotel and then he came to um, meet me for the first time and I had brought him some like uh, I think I brought him some coffee and some cookies from Guam and I wasn't really expecting anything from him but when he came to the door he had that big bright smile he looked really excited to see me and um, I remember him saying something like uh, you're more beautiful in person or something like that something really sweet and I was probably just smiling like a goofball um, and then he had brought me some really nice tea from Tivana that was a chai tea which is perfect because he's his heritage is Indian but he grew up in the United States and I just thought it was really sweet that he thought to bring me something like that and then he uh, invited me out to dinner but he felt bad that my mom would be home alone so he invited her to come with us on our first date and I was there for actually etiquette certification to teach etiquette classes in our school and so uh, I think he was a little bit nervous about that so we went out for Italian and he would you could see he was like really trying hard to remember all of his protocol of, like opening the door and getting us seated and all of that and he ordered some calamari and as we were eating I actually had a fumble with the cal calamari and I had picked it up and it fell into my lap so after that he seemed a lot more relaxed and at ease so we had a good time uh, hanging out and talking my mom is really uh, just kind of social and so they chatted a lot and and uh, I talked some we kind of kind of chimed in and stuff and so it was really just kind of a neat way to break the ice and I thought it was sweet he invited my mom along so the next day we decided to go to the Georgia Aquarium and it was I think about an hour drive or so to get to the city from where we were and I had been wanting to go to the Georgia Aquarium ever since it opened but I never had the chance while we were in line it was really really cold he was really sweet there was a long line and uh, we actually had snow later that day and he ran and got me uh, some coffee to help me warm my hands and keep me warm especially coming from Guam where it's all hot all the time and uh, tropical weather so it was just really sweet that he thought to get me something to warm my hands and we had a good time but I was a little bit nervous and had a hard time just kind of relaxing and really enjoying myself I think because uh, the first uh, date experience that I had with the first guy it uh, kind of 
wasn't bad, but it just wasn't what I thought it would be. Yeah, so I was kind of afraid of having like another failed meeting with this, the second guy that I liked. And so, yeah, I was just a little bit tense. And it was just funny because at that point where I started to have these doubts and worry and being uh, a little bit nervous, I had gone to the ladies' room and there was this woman in there. And she was an older woman and she was just like cleaning the bathroom and she just seemed to have such a joy which I think she might have been humming or singing or something as she was cleaning and I asked her like hey how are how are you and she said I am so blessed baby <laughs> and I just thought wow you know it's, it's such a cold icky day outside she's in here cleaning bathroom she's an older woman you know I guess I just thought like she's in a season that people should be working to take care of her and here she is cleaning bathrooms and for her to say like I am so blessed really blessed me and just for some reason it just made me calm right down and then after that I was uh, just a lot more relaxed in our time. It was a good date, but I didn't feel like I was in love with Ben at that point. I thought he was cute. I thought he was sweet. I thought he was thoughtful. You know, I thought a lot of good things about him, but I didn't feel like we were having like that connection that I guess I always dreamed that you would have when you fall in love with somebody. And so I just didn't know what was going to happen from there. The next day was Sunday and he and I and my mom went to go visit my sister who lives in Georgia and we helped to teach Sunday school. So Ben being a worship leader at his church, he did the worship during the Sunday school. So he sang some songs and I sang with him. That was kind of fun. And then we did a craft with the kids. And so it was neat to do some sort of a service together just to see how he worked with children, just to see his leadership skills on display. That, that was a really neat time and experience. And then he had to go back that afternoon, so he did. So um, that was the weekend and it was a nice weekend. But like I said, I wasn't really feeling in love with him, even though I liked him. And so we Skyped, I think that that Sunday night when he got home and so we were kind of see and evaluate like okay we've met in person we've been talking all this time now what we started to talk and you know I told him I was like well you know I I, I like these things about you I think you're really handsome and everything um, but I'm not in love with you and uh, we've been talking for months now and <laughs> I guess I was so naive about like how love works and what I was supposed to be expecting or feeling because I didn't have a lot of dating experience. So he, he looked at me uh, through the video screen and he's like, I'm not in love with you either. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well here we are. Um, this is guy number two and it's not panned out as well. So I was just, I don't know, a little bit confused at this point. And so we did ask like, well, do we wanna keep talking and give it some more time or a chance? And it sounds so over unromantic to say, <laughs> to say it like that, but the idea of not talking anymore, of not having been um, a part of my life, you know, I it made me really sad. Like, so even even though I wasn't like in love with him at that time, the idea of not having some sort of a relationship with him made me really sad. So I, I said, well, maybe we'll just keep talking and and we'll just see what happens. So I went back to Guam and we continued to talk through email and through Skype. And then I actually came back to the States for, uh, for an event. And at that time, I decided to go to North Carolina to visit with Ben. And also I wanted, I really wanted to meet his family. I wanted to meet his church. I wanted to see where he worked. I just kind of wanted to see what his life looked like and really to see if people respected him. I wanted to see him on his turf. And when I got here, um, it was amazing how much more relaxed I was and I had decided before coming that I was going to not force anything you know if we don't connect romantically we don't connect romantically and that's fine and we can just you know shake hands and, and say goodbye but at the same time I told myself that I really just wanted to relax 
and just be open and see what happens. I wasn't gonna force anything, but I wasn't going to stop anything out of fear. And so Ben met me at the airport and he had brought me some coffee and he had a convertible at the time. And so he just kind of whipped me off and it was springtime. North Carolina is really beautiful in the spring. And at that point he took my hand for the first time. So we were just driving, he was holding my hand and like my first um, reaction was like, whoa, is this okay? And then I was like, let's just, let's just try it out. And before I knew it, like I was loving it. I, I just loved holding hands with him. And um, it was just something really, really special in those feelings that I didn't have on our first meeting, which now thinking back on it, it's like, uh, yeah, of course you wouldn't have those feelings on your first time having met. They were there. So that weekend was really kind of a whirlwind um, of feelings and it was such a romantic time with him and I loved seeing him in his community and with his family and with his church and to see how respected he was and how he carried himself so confidently and how um, caring he was and hearing the stories of his character and all that stuff just affirmed I guess all the things that I hoped he was, it affirmed that he really was that. I felt butterflies, I felt little flushed cheeks, I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and it kind of hit me from by surprise. Because our first meeting wasn't, while it was nice, it wasn't, there wasn't a spark there. This meeting was a lot different, I think partly because I was kind of away from anybody that I knew, so I felt like I could really like let my hair down, like nobody was looking up to me there. Um, you know, I think especially if you're in ministry, you're a missionary, or even just a teacher, someone who is a role model, you can be a little bit uptight. <laughs> Maybe, at least I was, because I wanted to be a good role model for all of those little eyes watching me. And so here I was kind of an unknown person and I felt like I could just relax and be myself and let my hair down and allow myself to have feelings for for this guy. We had a lovely weekend and I hated that it ended. And so from then on out, our relationship just continued to grow and I continued to grow in my admiration for him and my love for him. And even the distance just seems not to be that big of a deal. And then had told me that like, if God showed him that we were to be together, he would go any distance to come and get me because I was kind of doubting like, would anybody be willing to go the distance? to pursue me, to, to win me. And I was starting to doubt that they would because I felt like I was just too far away. I was too hidden, too um, much of a, um, a fight. It would be too much of a fight to come and get me, you know? Um, and so he, I, I almost was like, oh, well, okay, you show me. You say this, you show me that you, that you mean it. So after that visit, we continued to talk and he then came to visit Guam. I really wanted him to meet my people, my friends, my community, to see where I had been living for the past four years, just so he could have some context. Um, and so when he came there, first couple days were a little bit awkward because I felt like I was a little bit in a fishbowl and um, people were like watching and wondering and wondering who this guy was out of the blue and I was still kind of hush hush about how uh, I met him, you know, and avoided the <laughs> answering that kind of question. But then something shifted uh, midweek and that feeling those in love feelings that we had in North Carolina started to flood back and we just had a great time so after that I visit him again and we just kind of continued to grow and, and fit visits in and during our time in person in our meetings and different visits and stuff I did get to see a different side of him I did get to see his sense of humor and we got to joke and and laugh and and so I realized like he even though he seemed very serious on Skype a lot of the times there was this other side to him which I was hoping was there and it, as it turned out I have never laughed as hard as I have with Ben as with anyone else like there is such a goofy side to him that most people don't see so I loved getting to see that side of him and enjoying that and to just laugh with him and connect uh, in that way and then in one of my visits to North Carolina he uh, asked me to marry him and I <laughs> 
I was a little bit scared, um, but excited. And so I told him actually after he had this really beautiful proposal where he like um, symbolically washed my feet, uh, which is something in the Bible that Jesus did with his disciples. He washed their feet to kind of show that to be a good leader means to be a servant to those you are leading. And so he kind of did that symbolically for me. And told me that he wanted to to be my husband and to take care of me basically and I, I honestly don't remember everything that he said I just know that it was really beautiful and touching but I, I was a little bit scared um, so I was like oh let me think about it <laughs> and um, so he took it really well and he gave me the ring and I told him uh, when you see the ring on my finger that means I've said yes which was funny that I didn't say if you see the ring I said when so it was almost just like I needed some time to process and call my mom and uh, just to pray about it and just be really sure I think it was the next day or two days later I had the ring on my finger and he had come to pick me up from where I was staying to take me out and he didn't even notice the ring at first. I thought probably anytime he saw me, he'd be checking my hands to see if I had said yes, you know, with the ring on my finger. But um, I had the ring on my finger and I had to tell him like, Ben, look at my hand. <laughs> and he was so, oh my goodness, like you have it on. And at that point he just like scooped me up and like swirled me around. I was really excited and happy. So after that, it was just kind of a whirlwind of making plans for a wedding and for moving and all of those things. And my mom and I actually um, got a home down in Georgia for my mom to take a health related sabbatical from um, ministry. So she, she and I were living down there and they would come down on the weekends. So we are able to spend all that time together and do all of our planning and, and stuff like that. And I did decide to get married on Guam because I felt like my community really was there. Uh, my friends in the States, while I had like a pretty large network, I hadn't done that good of a job of keeping in touch with everybody. And so I felt like if I had got married stateside, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have a lot of people come to my wedding because my, all my friends were all kind of spread out as well. And so I decided to get married on Guam because that's where my community was. That's where the children that I taught were. That's where I had spent the last four years. And so it was really important to me to get married there and kind of, um, not close, yeah, sort of close uh, that chapter. It seemed like a really beautiful way to close that season of my life, to have that, uh, our wedding there, and then him just kind of whisk me away to the to the States and let's begin our married life. So um, actually that day was kind of bittersweet for that, for that very reason, because it was the day I was getting married, which is a super happy time, but it's also the day my life was really changing um, because I was saying goodbye to Guam in that season there. So so that is the story of how we met, how we fell in love, and so you can see why I was a little bit embarrassed in the beginning to talk about like how we met because um, I just, I guess I like most girls, I really wanted a good, intriguing, exciting story of like how we met, but honestly it was what I needed in our story. And during that whole time, you know, I had questions and doubts of, Things. There's really some deep things that I can't get into at this time, but Ben encouraged me all along the way. For example, there was this one night I was super discouraged and I was just praying. I was like, God, I need something. I need some kind of encouragement. I am so low right now. Just thinking about all the uncertainty with the ministry and finding a facility for it and if it's even going to exist anymore. Ben sent me this email out of the blue. Like at that moment I was praying, an email came in from him and it was a crazy hour of the night for him. Like he, I don't know, it was like two or three in the morning. I forget what time it would have been for him. But he just said like, Abby, I can't sleep. I was just thinking about you and just wanted to send you this email. And in the email, it was all this encouragement. And I was just like, wow, thank you, God. Like, and that said something to me that like Ben, he must listen, listen to God to um, be up in the middle of the night to send me this encouraging email at the moment that I was praying for encouragement and here it came through him. And so that was just assuring to me like, okay, cause I want a husband, I want a spouse who is in tune with God and who is listening and obedient. And so I felt like 
that was in Ben. And Ben, time and time again, was just so generous. Like he paid for airfare for me to come and visit with him. He just did a lot that I can't really get all into, but he he just, to me, was an example of Christ-like love. And there were times where I just wondered if anybody would go the distance, if anybody would fight for me, if anybody would come all the way to Guam or whatever. And and he did. And I thought about like that likeness to, to Christ. You know, he paid the ultimate price for his bride, to have his bride. And he came the ultimate distance to come and have her. And I, I felt like how Ben was treating me and uh, the way he was willing to you know have this long distance relationship and 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 do all that he did just showed me uh, not that we should look to people to show our worth or tell us what our worth is but to me was a, just a good reflection of how Christ viewed me and my worth to him uh, because of all of that. So, I mean, I could talk on and on about all of that in the journey, the spiritual journey that it was, which I haven't really talked that much about in this video, but it was quite a journey. And it's a, a beautiful part of our story. And I'm glad that there were the challenges that there was as far as the dis distance and stuff, because um, it showed me how much Ben was willing to fight for me. Um, or to what he was willing to do in order to pursue me. And I, I just am really thankful for him, so glad that we're married. And he has shown me that, he showed me what a joy marriage can be. And I just love every day, having every day with him and growing with him and building this life together. And while our story wasn't what I imagined it would be, it's our story and I actually wouldn't change it because there was just a lot of neat symbolism in it for me. And um, so anyway, thank you for listening to the story of how I met my husband and how we came to fall in love. Don't forget to check out the stories of Abby over at Inspired to Health and Christiana at Heart and Home. I'll have their links below. I know this was a long video and maybe you had to break it up in order to, to finish it if you even did. So thanks for joining me in this retelling of our story. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.